Okay. Jay Shramasji, Pat, Anselo, It's very nice to have you both this morning on the uh, 20th of July, 2023, uh, to, to remember, to recount the times you had with uh, the Adi Shakti herself, Srimataji Nirmala Devi. So, um, Pat uh, is one of the uh, first of the seven Sahaja Yogis in England, in the United Kingdom, in the Western world that Srimataji uh, took as, as, her, as her devotee, as a disciple, as a child, and Experiment, gave you the self-realization, um, Pat, doesn't it? Yes. So. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, uh, you, you, were you going to ask some specific questions? Yes. Could you please tell us when and where and how did you meet Srimataji? Uh, and how did you get your realization? Briefly, please. Well, they were both, uh, they took place at the same time. I, uh -huh. I met Srimataji um, in London in a. a block of flats called Clare Court near King's Cross in uh -huh. Judd Street. Uh, one Sunday afternoon, uh, I heard that uh, a yogi lady was going to be visiting somebody I knew, a Hatha Yoga teacher. So uh, we went to see Shimataji then. I had no idea what to expect at all. I walked in the room and was completely blown away. Uh, I just felt... Uh, I felt as if I'd walked, I was just been in a, on a, in a jungle path and walked into a broad royal hi highway. There was, uh, everything seemed full of light. And uh, the other thing that struck me was that Shimataji was telling somebody off quite forcibly. And uh, I, that surprised me because uh, I expected it to be all meditative and quiet. And, and uh, instead, it, it, I got thrown into this thing where I, I thought, found myself thinking this is what it must have been like to to meet Christ preaching in the, in the market somewhere. You know, it was just this incredible authority and uh, extraordinary personality. And um, it, it went, mother worked on me and said I was sick and needed all kinds of things doing. And uh, it, a uh, few other things happened, but basically, you know, I, I must've got my realization then Although I had problems, uh, you know, mother worked on me for quite a while. I had problems with my sensitivity from the mm -hmm. Vishuddhi. So uh, I didn't, you know, I experienced all kinds of extraordinary things. Uh, it, I don't know whether I felt the vibrations that clearly. And uh, that, that was my first experience and my realization all, all in one, really. Okay. I have some uh, uh, photos to. Uh to share um do, do you want at this point that we share those photos uh perhaps a perhaps a bit later because okay okay the, um, go through the questions first okay so um your first meeting with Shramataji and it was the uh, all uh encompassing the light uh and the love which was quite stern at, from what what uh, we gather listening to your first meeting with uh, Srimataji and how you sort of felt that this is what, um, how Jesus would have been in the market full of people who probably weren't, uh, you know, on the path to what Jesus, uh, Sri Jesus was saying. Uh, could you, could you, I know I heard um, earlier that um, you had something like six months or something um, I mean, physically, you were in a very, very bad state at that point of time. Is that right? Yes, yes. Uh, Mother said I, I had six months to live, she thought. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I knew I was in a bad state, but I, I was so fixated on, on seeking the truth that I didn't really pay much attention to that. I was just busy trying to go ahead in all directions, I suppose you could say. Yes, um, but such and, a uh, mother. Mother, uh, we we. She, she was that was I think in September 1975, yes. and we stayed. Her mother stayed there for two or three months, uh, with us, and um, we did all, all kinds of things happen. 
Um, so when you say you stayed with Shumataji, where is this uh, that you stayed with? Well, I mean, she used to come on meet us in 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 uh, this house in North Gower Street in Houston. Okay. Uh, after uh -huh. the after Muck and Shah's place, we we were there for one meeting, and um, uh, we went to her house a couple of times as well in Oxted in her screen, uh -huh. and um, we. Uh, I suppose I met Mother, spent time with Mother on about half a dozen occasions before she went to India. And then she was missing, you know, abroad for uh, several months. And then she came back and we just started, went back to where we'd been before and carried on. But that was for the whole of, most of 1976, we were with Mother in various places, in her house, in... Uh, also in uh, uh, Houston, in the house in Houston, and uh, various other places, including on the tube. Um, Apparently, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you turn. I mean, practically twenty four seven from the sound of it. Oh, on occasion, yeah, we slept at Mother's house. Um, uh, you know, wow. we would be up uh, all night, uh, all day, and and Mother would be telling us stories, and and we'd be asking questions, and she'd be working on us. And it went on and on and on, and all sorts of things happened. But uh, I can talk about some of those things um, with some of the other questions, I think, that you have. Uh, at this point, I may, if I may, I'd like to ask some of the wisdom that you learned from those stories that, that stand out for you, even now. Well, there's so many things, isn't there? I know. <laughs> there's uh, just so many, but just pick maybe two or three. Please. Well, I, I can't really. I, I, I could I could describe experiences I had, which Go on. With, which would yes, give please. you an idea of what it was like. I mean, the the, the second time I went to Shimataji, uh, the various things happened before. I put all these things mostly in my book, actually, in expecting to fly. Um, when I got to Mother's house in her screen, I my heart chakra was catching. Apparently, uh, I felt very um uneasy and my heart was beating erratically uh, i couldn't relax uh, it's very different to how i'd felt before and mm. shimataji immediately almost immediately looked at me and said your heart's catching come here and uh, kneel down in front of me uh, and then she closed her eyes and uh, i immediately saw uh, this image of um an arabian looking lady in made out of vibrations like pixels on a tv screen wow. uh, uh, very dignified very powerful lady with her head covered um look it looked sort of arabic to me and um yeah. then it sort of that, that it glided forward and sort of stood over me this image and uh i, I recognized the image immediately i i knew it, it was the virgin mary and i knew it was um uh, an archetype mm -hmm. Uh, but I had no idea how I knew that, but I just felt frightened and I, I felt that she's not human, you know, I, this is too much. So I looked down at Mother's feet and um, I could see her feet uh, like an x-ray vision of her feet with this uh, beautiful energy flowing through her bones of her feet. And I thought um, to myself, this is what Christ's feet must have looked like when he was walking on the earth. And then I went down into her feet, my, my attention, my, my consciousness, and the, her feet became, became huge hollow tunnels full of lights. And I went into these tunnels and I felt completely secure and completely uh, relaxed and quite blissful. And then I came back to myself and found I was need, still kneeling in front of Shimatajin her eyes were open and she was smiling at me. And at that point, I felt this uh, incredible sense of um, something awakening in me, something really, really ancient, all coming back together. It was very, very powerful. And it was getting more and more stronger and stronger. And I, my sister who was watching me said, I looked like a flower opening up to the sun. And then Shimataji sort of went, oops, too much, and kind of pushed me back down again. 
And I felt a bit annoyed about that for a moment, but then I, I knew I wasn't, I didn't deserve anything like that. I wasn't in any fit state to experience something like that. But um, then I realized this thing in my heart had gone and I mm -hmm. felt completely relaxed and, and very blissful. So, you know, things like that were happening. Not that, that was probably the most powerful experience that happened, the most magical uh, in those early days. Yes. But uh, there was stuff like that happening all the time. Um, you know, uh, another time I was I was just sitting with mother was just sitting uh, talking to me in, uh, at her dining room table, and mm -hmm. um, I suddenly saw that she was the primordial mother, and that she had all these divine weapons all over her, which were a bit like flowers, and and they were all neatly tied off as if they weren't needed. Wow. They weren't, they weren't to be used. She was, they, you know, she was just using vibrations and sad yoga techniques. Uh, lots of things like that. So I kept jumping from extraordinary experiences to feeling really bad all the time. <laughs> and, and mother was talking, and yeah. you know, I would, I wouldn't, you know, we were asking all kinds of stupid questions. Uh, I guess you know because we didn't know anything. We were ignorant. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mother would answer them all and and I gradually got this picture of uh you know the the instrument the the deities the chakras the virata and I I started to see you know what you the, the sort of extent of the canvas that mother was working on was vast and I sort of knew sort of who she was but not in detail you know and I just filled in the details as time went on, I guess. You know, I sure. just knew she was like Christ. And mm -hmm. I knew she was, um, uh, it, this was something extraordinary, something completely new. And, uh, but she made you feel, you know, yeah. completely relaxed. Normally, I'd the first 20 minutes or so in her presence, I'd feel super hyper aware of, of all the problems I got inside me. It's like a big searchlight on me. And, and then gradually I, I would feel the Kundalini pushing up through my body uh, and aches and pains dissolving until suddenly I, I would just feel very relaxed and fine mm. and often like a child. And to begin with, I found it, you know, I was trying to be cynical, you know, trying to be uh, not to just accept it all blindly, but to understand what was happening. And, that was um, my um, question, if I may. So, you know, like uh, in, in India, you grow up with this uh, knowledge, uh, it, you know, about the deities, uh, the chakras, not so much the Kundalini, of course, uh, but there is a sense of recognition in the heart. Um, when did the penny drop for you, uh, for Shrimataji, for who she is? These absolutely outstanding extraordinary magical moments where you see so much light and love the peace the joy but when did the penny drop for you uh well, it, about as i said it was it was it was um i i didn't have that background knowledge i knew something about chakras i'd had some experience of chakras and kundalini um yes. in my seeking uh, mother told me later that, that I was born with my Kundalini awakened. Not, I wasn't realized, but she said, Christ awakened many seekers Kundalinis when he was here. And that made you more sensitive. Your Kundalini could go up to the Agya, but you, you weren't realized. Wow. So I had this kind of gut re, uh, recognition that well, that this is it, but I didn't know what it was. You know, it... So it was a matter of filling in the details, really. Yes. And, uh, and trying to fit it into some, some of my other ideas that I'd got from reading books and all kinds of things. So sometimes there was confusion. Sometimes um, I reacted against my, things Mother said because, you know, I, I was basically a hippie. I, I believed in, uh, I believed that, uh, uh, well, it's basically hedonistic. But but in an idealistic way, it was the idea, the idea that um, we we didn't know how to open out, open our hearts, and be natural because we were too uh, damaged and suppressed. Uh, 
And so we were trying to open up to everything in a, in a pretty stupid way. Um, yes. So, you know, some of it was a bit difficult. I yeah. found the religious, religious, I kept having these religious experiences uh, with mother, which I couldn't understand because that didn't fit into me, my ideas at all. Can uh, you share instance, one of those, please? The religious hmm? experiences you had with well, mother. Well, I, like when I first went in and, and saw and thought this is like like Christ teaching, in you know in in the marketplace. Uh, that's and I thought why am I referring to Christ and and uh, in 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 a classical almost religious way. I mean, I I knew Christ consciousness existed. Uh, I wasn't sure what, and I knew it was in everybody as well potentially. Uh, I wasn't sure. Um, whether Christ was uh, uh, um, the, the ultimate, you know, the, the primordial Christ who had come on earth, or whether it was just somebody who had experienced Christ's consciousness. So that, that's where I was at the time. But I kept having these religious um, mm. kind of reactions and, and, and feeling, uh, want, feeling like a, a little child and, and, and this, um, you know, it's kind of like this goody goody stuff, you know, it was like, it seemed to me, you know, that you, yeah. it's like the sort of stuff my parents wanted, you know, you to be well behaved and neat and, and, and polite and all that, which, you know, we sort of spent years trying to get rid of. <laughs> and, you know, and this I just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, no, I, I actually just kept feeling like that and, and, and questioning it, you know, mm -hmm. trying to figure it out. The most amazing thing uh, is that, you know, Shramataji actually told you and the other yogis who were there with you personally, everything about Sahaja Yoga. So I was wondering, like, you spent so many days and nights with Shramataji at her house. Um, could you recount a day as sort of a typical day and night for us? Um, Not really, because it was always different. I mean... Sure. Uh, for instance, some, sometimes mother would would cook for us. Um, yes. Uh, we used to, and eat, we'd eat huge huge meals, and then all fall asleep for a couple of hours in the afternoon, in in lots of comfortable armchairs. Right. Uh, we uh, it would just go on talking and um, uh, explaining, and us asking questions. Um, it just went on all the time. Uh, at one stage, after later on, we were doing some work in the house as well. Um, you know, doing some painting and decorating, sanding things down. And mother came and joined in, helped us to do it. How was that? <laughs> and just as she'd just be sanding a, a windowsill or something and yeah. chatting to us. Um, wow. It, it, it just. Uh, just went on all the time or we'd be out I mean one day she'd be telling us all the time yeah in a very profound way what what we were doing what what was there I mean one day she she took us out into her back garden uh and and got some water and washed our feet uh just like Christ did and that was almost impossible to bear you know I just felt so unworthy and so astonished but she just did that. And she did, um, I mean, with my sister, Maureen, she, she uh, Maureen slept with her upstairs. Um, oh. uh, because uh, Maureen was quite, you know, had various things she was worried about. She uh, she can tell that st all those stories. Oh. Um, but we, we just did everything together, you know, really. Uh, uh, we, we CP would go off somewhere on a tour for his work and, and mother would sort of ring us up and say, house is free, quick, come over. <laughs> and, we, and we'd come over for the weekend, you know, and stay. Wow. And um, sometimes we'd be at uh, the house in Houston, in uh, North Gower Street, and sometimes in other places. And, and we'd often st st stay the night, sleep on the floor. Um, so informal and yet it was so profound and it was so familiar somehow you know it was just timeless you just didn't feel like it was a uh, part of normal life at all it was just like 
a lot of it was I kept feeling that like I was inside the pages of a Bible and there was this biblical story taking place all around me. And it seemed quite normal uh, yes. somehow. Certainly. You know, it was very relaxing. It just seemed natural. And, and uh, uh, I kept... Um, How does it feel now when you look back? Well, I, I wish I could have been in a better state to re fully appreciate it. You know, it was like, um, I think I said in my book, I was, it was like looking at a fantastic meal when you're starving through a window and you're, you're not able to reach it fully and touch it and taste it. Um, you know, I, I, I was in various states. Mother would um, do all sorts of things uh, to clear me out. I mean, one day I came back all caught up and she made me bow down at her feet. And she took her shoe and shoe beat my Kundalini. Um, Quite forcibly. Like physically, should be checking. Yeah, living. absolutely. Enough, hard enough wow. for me to see see stars. And mother used to wear those sort of a little heeled shoes, isn't no, it? No, it didn't have a heel. No, it didn't. She she must have okay. known it was going to happen, because anyway, she did it, and and they worked really well. Cleared me out amazingly. Uh, it was oh, brilliant. And another day, amazing. another day, she took a big jar of oil and gave me a head massage with oil for ages. I mean, wow. we were so spoiled, and yeah. I knew we were. Like, I kept feeling we were like kids, and I, I kind of, I remember feeling. I hope we don't have to grow up too quick, because <laughs> it's really, really nice, you know, the amount of attention we got. Yes. Um, she, she, she was asking us questions a lot of the time, um, mm. you know, because she wanted to know what we've been doing in our seeking and what problems we'd had, and and. Uh, that 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 was quite a common thing and she was obviously quite horrified by quite a lot of the things we had to say yes but we i mean she was just like your mother you know it, we were relaxed we we didn't really find out anything about protocol until we went to india uh, about a year later so that uh, would be 1976 77 uh, early 77 um january we went to india Wow. Uh, 1976, we, we spent all, all most of that year with Mother in our house and in various places. And uh, there were a few seekers coming now and then, but mostly they weren't. Mother just, I think she would felt she had enough problems on her hands, so she, she just concentrated on us. And uh, it was uh, incredible. It was just, seems like a dream, a happy dream now in a way. Yes, how Shabbatali has mentioned, like you, you, Sahaj Yogis, at, of that um, time, the beginning of Sahaj Yoga were actually the foundation. I mean, continue to be foundation that's even in our generation. Well, she first. wanted us to feel responsible, I guess. Yeah. But we were in a way, you know, because she was finding out, well, she, she, she said so many, I mean, Almost any situation I'm in now, I can look at it and just remember what it felt like to be in her presence. And I somehow know what mother would have said about it. You know, that, that's the way I feel. You know, it, it was kind of ingrained in me, almost on a molecular level, because so many things happened and so many things were talked about. Could you elaborate on that, please? The molecular level is fantastic. Not really, is it? I'm just, How it's, does just, it manifest? On a day-to-day -day basis, manifest. it's just like that. It, I just, I just remember what it was like to be in mother's presence, like that, and yeah. I just look at the situation and I, kind of instinctively feel, what the sort of thing mother would have said about it. Um, that's all. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, it, it, that that's something which is, rubbed sure. off. But it was intense, and it and it went on for, a long, long time. We spent days and days and days with mother over months, and uh, even after that, even when even in, when we were in India, we we went to um, Nepal halfway through and 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 stayed with mother at Gregoire's house, and um, for a week, you know, and had that kind of intensive time yeah. as well, um, and uh, of course we tried to stay at the back in India and give the, the Indian yogis a chance to be with mother. But uh, then we went back to, when we went back to England, 
after that we were there for three months on that first tour okay. and uh, when we, we went back to England our mother came back in I don't know March or April or something and then we we had another uh, few months during the summer and then until the first Caxton Hall meeting which took place um, again something like September I think I can't remember but the end of the summer anyway and, so uh, that was 1978, roughly, we are talking about. Uh, 77. 77. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. And that, that was quite frightening, um, you know. Frightening. Uh, yeah, because apart from anything else, Mother made us all sit on chairs around her on the stage, you know. When, wow. When... <laughs> and that was horrendous. That was horrendous. <laughs> uh, because I, I just felt all the stuff mother was doing on the Kundalini working mm. through my body and I was just in agony and I was trying to look all serene and evolved, you know, <laughs> and I was just kind of, oh my God, I can't, I can't take that for them. <laughs> but there were about uh, 200 people must have come, something like that in Caxton Hall. Wow. And uh, at the end of it, mother just suddenly took off from the stage and went down the steps and was working on the, people in the crowd and we just came down with her and it changed everything changed uh, in 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 like one program it's like sad yoga completely changed gear from from just a few people with shimata d2 we went we started inviting them to come to the ashram in uh, uh, golders green mm -hmm. suddenly there were 70 people instead of six or seven uh, and it Change. It, then it was it, it was similar to what we'd gone through with mother asking questions, people asking questions, mother working on people. But it changed completely. The the earlier couple of years were really something unbelievably special. Yes. So what was it like watching movies with mother? I know you mentioned Shrimatji would cook for you all. Um, watching movies, going on picnics with her. I mean, there were serious times when she was clearing you all out and, you know, te teaching you, uh, evolving you, of course, at the subtle level. But on the face of it, uh, what was it like when you would do lighter things like those, watching movies, picnics, shopping? Well, we didn't watch movies much. Um, we, uh, when we were once, uh, Mother said we can watch, we used to watch some Water Margin we were fond of in those days. Uh, which uh -huh. was about all these uh, great souls that are reincarnated in China to, to fight the baddies, basically. And um, and uh, a, a Wonder Woman we used to watch. And Mother said uh -huh. we could watch it if we wanted. We and She came and watched Wonder Woman with us. And halfway through, she turned to us and said, you, you know who the real Wonder, Wonder Woman is, don't you? <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, we had stuff like that. We didn't. We didn't go to. You know, we didn't watch movies very much. I mean, it was uh, just intense talk and working. I mean, we used to. Mother used to work on us for a long period. I mean, we used to spend maybe two hours with our head on her feet uh, in each person while she worked on our kundalini. Wow. Um, or we would spend hours was forming chains. With mother bike working what I was going to place. ask you about, um, you know, treatments that Shrimataji would have told you about. I mean, she's clearly clearing, uh, clearing yogis at that time. What were the different techniques that she had used? No, nothing much in those days. It's pretty simple. It's mainly foot soaking and shoe beating. Uh, the first time she showed me shoe beating, she used her shoe and did it on the floor. And and I, I, I had suddenly saw this um, beautiful view of outer space with the earth hanging there, and Mother was beating the whole earth with her shoe. Uh, I had, you know, it kept flashing into these. I mean, another time, I was just sitting in the room, not feeling anything much, feeling pretty awful. Mother was talking, and then suddenly, I was floating on a lotus on this ocean and, and there was this the gale of wind flowing right through the room. You know, I kept jumping from one thing to the other. Wow. Uh, and uh, many, many, many things were happening. And, and there were, you know, there were six of us, so other people were asking things, talking about things, having things to uh, 
talk about. I mean, the first the first pujas we had in our house, um, Mother brought a um, an Indian chap named Tatpal, mm -hmm. um, who was a uh, pujari of some sort, and she gave him realization, and he conducted the pujas. And mother just told him he, he would go through his routine and occasionally mother would correct him, say, do this, do that, do the other. And um, when it came to the arti, uh, we had a, a, a record from a, a movie um, where the old right. arti, you know, where the old arti used to play um, the Om Jai, she was yeah, Om Jai Jagadish Hare. Yeah, that one. And, and yeah. we used to put that record on and 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 play that and clap, and that that was the yeah. arty. And we'd have one piece of prasad each, not the uh, you know fifteen platefuls that everyone gets these days. And uh, <laughs> it was, yeah, it was amazing. Mother would explain the pujas, and I mean, on on one occasion uh, when we had the ashram in. Um, after the Caxton Hall program, we were going to do a havan mm -hmm. out in the garden. And Mother said that, um, trying to find out if somebody could read the Sanskrit out, names out, and nobody could do it. And so mm -hmm. Mother said, well, there's nothing for it. I'll, I'll just have to worship myself. And, and she read the names. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> uh, but pujas could be quite long. That there was no bhajans, of course. That came a long time later. We say use mother taught us the mantras. We'd use the mantras, and um, mother would. So what teach was us. the long pujas like? Could you please describe for us one of them? Because I've heard this before, where pujas would be very long. And but what what would it entail? What was it about? Uh, well, mostly it was because mother had to explain everything and do everything herself and, and arrange everything and say, bring that here and bring this there and go and get that thing and now do this. Uh, but we used to do um, havans. Uh, in those days, they used to be done after the puja. And we used to do the whole um, thousand names with English translation. So they, the havan would take four hours. Uh, you know, and, and in fact, that happened to Gajna on her the, her first visit to the ashram. She had uh -huh. no idea what to expect. She found herself in a first in a puja and then in a four hour haban. Uh, and um, yeah, the, it, it was a long. The habans were very long, and uh, but we, you know, there was a lot to work out. We we had all kinds of problems. Yeah, indeed. Can I ask Greshna at this point, what was it like to, for her when, like you mentioned, her first uh, visit to the ashram, perhaps your first meeting with Srimataji Greshna, was it? You want me to talk about my realization of uh, oh, yes, coming, coming for, oh, okay. Oh. Um, so, uh, it was a little bit different from Pat's experience because um, I already um, there was there were already many people um, in Sahaj Yoga, uh, so I came I came to um, Caxton Hall and um, somebody gave me. Uh, the address and I came to Caxton Hall and I saw Shimataji in white sari sitting on the stage. There were these two lamps on each side of her, two Indian lamps burning, very tall lamps. And she looked so majestic and so amazing. Could feel this power coming from her. It was just, and the whole atmosphere in the room was very still, and she spoke. I even, even now I remember the talk. She was talking about the oysters. Uh, some oysters uh, from the sand, they go to the sea, and some of them manage to reach the sea, but some of them don't. And then she was saying, I wonder which oysters you are. And I was wondering about myself, you know, I wonder. <laughs> 
uh, what kind of seeker I am. But before coming uh, to Caxton Hall, I already had an experience of uh, spiritual awakening in Poland. So when I cycled to the lake, it was uh, five o'clock in the morning and the lake was still, the sun was going up. Uh, it was very peaceful and I was, I just stretched on the ground, I was quite tired. And suddenly the whole nature was inside me and I just felt I just felt completely different person. I was not a person really. I felt part, part of the God's creation and I knew it was God's creation. So I came home and I said, God exists. <laughs> I was wow. an, I was an atheist, atheist at, the, at the time. So, and several times I had uh, exp I experienced thoughtless awareness and I experienced very different things and my, everything started to go right in my life. I could come to England from, from the moment of the experience. So when I came to, uh, when, and I was looking, consciously looking for it because I was, I joined different meditation groups. I was practicing Hatha Yoga, doing all kinds of things, meditation. And when I came to Caxton Hall, um, I I was also looking for that experience, somebody who could give me a sort of continuation of this experience that I had, which I didn't find in any other seeking groups. And Shimataji asked ask us to put our hands out and to get our realization. And I felt like a fountain opening from the base of my spine going up my spinal cord coming out of my head. It was so strong because it was just whoosh. It was just amazing. So I I felt incredible. And it was just overwhelming. And I knew, I mean, <laughs> because I had this, I had this uh, different experiences before. I knew it was it. I, did, I didn't know really who Sri Mataji was at that point, but I, I knew I belonged to her. So <laughs> organically, I belonged to her. So, you know, and then I went to her feet actually because everybody was queuing. So I was obviously queuing and I just sort of, I think I kneeled down because that's what people were doing. So, and, um, and I was smiling, Sri Mataji was smiling. And I, I felt because probably because I was doing Hatha Yoga, I felt this uh, pain in my heart. I was not talking to Sri Mataji about the experience of this amazing uh, fountain come, because to me it was obvious, but I was concerned about <laughs> I was concerned <laughs> about the pain in my heart. So I said I, I felt this. And Sri Mataji said, no, this is it's okay. Your problem is um is here. And she said, you, do you catch colds? I said, yes, um, you will be okay soon. Uh, I must say I'm still working it out, but <laughs> soon <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a relative, it's very relative yeah. for God, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, so yes, so I was, so and, yeah. and actually she met her, she said, because I was smiling, she said, you are such a joyful person. I didn't think I was joyful at the time, but uh, I think I must be. <laughs> so, yeah, it really is important uh, from what I glean of what Mataji and being in Mataji's presence has been that that sense of peace and that sense of joy. Absolute joy, completely. You know, just like totally. driving, yeah. driving home, uh, yeah, home, and and. Uh, 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 two weeks later, uh, I I ended up uh, in uh, in the ashram. It was Dolly's Hill Ashram, and uh, I arrived there. I didn't know what to expect, but this was the day of Sahasrara Puja. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, uh, 
so I I was sitting there. Everybody was looking at me, wondering who I was. Um, but uh, I I just thought, well, I I sit at the back. But Shimataji called me to do the puja. So that's your first puja experience. Amazing. Yeah, yes, because because Shimataji Shimataji would call new people, people who never who never done the puja before. It was very quick. She she was not concerned about when the people came to Sahaja Yoga, how how many um, weeks or months they were meditating. Uh, it was very quick. She she would just call um, people to do her puja. So I did that. What did you do? Uh, I washed my feet. Yes, <laughs> I washed my feet and really? and um, and then wow. yeah. and then. Um, Shimadaji called me to do the heaven, as, as Pat was saying. The puja yes. started, maybe it was 10 o'clock when it started. Um, but uh, the heaven was very long. So I was sitting in the heaven and doing Om Swaha. Uh, it, it, the heaven was after the puja. Uh, so, uh, and uh, we, were doing, we were doing it in a, in a um, fireplace. Uh, it, no, it was not outside, it was inside. No, it was outside that one, I think. No, I remember it was inside. Could have been, could have been in the fireplace. It was a fireplace. Outside, just was outside the there. French windows. I know where, where I was sitting. I was sitting, it was May actually, it was the beginning of May, uh, you know. Pretty uh, cold. It, cold, yes. So anyway, so it was my, my legs were going a little bit, you know, I was thinking maybe I should uh, get up. Uh, but uh, I kept uh, sitting because I couldn't. I couldn't just uh, stand up in the middle of the heaven. I, I I didn't know what it was, but I felt you know I had to be there. So, uh, but I was quite used to sitting on the floor because I used to do hatha yoga. So after about four hours, the heaven it was over, and we had a music program. There was an Indian musician who came. And it went on for a long time. By ten o'clock um, uh, in the evening, we left, and I felt amazing. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I felt amazing, really. So, I mean, of course, I never. Do you remember the musician? I don't. No, okay. no. It was, I don't. I don't think. I don't think we've seen the musician again. I All mean, right. I, I don't know, but you know, those those days, uh, I was quite new in the country. My English was okay, but it was not like amazing. Um, sure. uh, so uh, so everything was just sort of a little bit blurred, you know. I felt like I still if you are if you are a foreigner in another country and yes. you know, you still don't quite understand what people say, and uh, you can't <laughs> communicate fully, then you feel yes. like a child. Uh, so I was uh, I was still in that kind of a state of, and then of course we were we were going later on. I was uh, following Shimataji everywhere she went, and sometimes I would I would uh, travel in Shimataji's car. Uh, we would sit in the back, and uh, we were going to different. During that time in 1980, there were many public programs around the country. So I I was. I was going to all these uh, public programs. I I, just, I was taken there somehow. I was uh, yes. So it was for me. It was just an amazing adventure, uh, nonstop yeah. uh, with Shimataji. And of course, I, I must say that at the second program, Shimataji said to me at the second public program I attended with Shimataji in Caxton Hall. I was uh -huh. just sitting there, um, and Shimataji looked at me and she said. Why are you sitting uh, sitting down? You have to work on people. So, <laughs> so I was shown <laughs> what to do. I was shown what to do, and I could feel yeah. everything. So, uh, so uh, I was quite amazed, and I think this is uh, uh, this is something that we really need to do with new people. Yeah. They really need to get engaged straight away. Um, yeah. To see that they actually have their own powers. 
Yes, the experience is so important. Absolutely, isn't it? experience the own powers because then I couldn't have enough of it because uh, each time I worked on people, my Kundalini used to go up really high. So, yeah. So could could you recount for us, and I address this question to both Pat and yourself, Krishna. The I mean, because being with Shamatji was uh like a normal routine for both of you and it's from the sounds of it certainly for pat uh much more um what what are the most profound miracles that you experience because i guess when you're with shumatji there's always this um bubble's not quite the right term but you're sort of on air in a special zone isn't it so do you do you have any miracles that you'd like to share Pat first. Well, for me, um, I had quite a lot of miracles, but they were mostly inner experiences. Mm -hmm. um, the most profound one took place. Um, I had an incredible dream, a uh, powerful dream, that I met the... Um, uh, the angel of death, you know, the... Um, the Grim Reaper. Wow. And uh, he was this huge warrior angel wearing battered armor covered in blood and a very serious guy. <laughs> and, and he said, he took, my hand, he took my hand and said, you have to say goodbye to everyone. Wow. And so I said, goodbye, everyone. <laughs> and he said, very good. And he gave us a very slight smile. And then I woke up and I thought, oh, God, I'm going to die. But what happened was um, a couple of days later, I had this unbelievable experience. I got out of my car to visit a client to do a central heating survey. And uh, suddenly I had this, um, the Kundalini came up through my body. It was so wide, it seemed wider than my body. Wow. And uh, it just went straight up and then bang. I was floating in the air um, above myself and somehow I still carried on with the, the work. Um, I, I went into the house, met the woman and I was going around measuring and stuff. And, and, and I, my, my real self was, was above my head, floating, smiling and looking at everything all around the rooms, around the ceilings. And this, this poor woman kept looking up behind herself and above herself very furtively. <laughs> She knew something was happening, but she didn't know what. And and anyway, this went on for several days, and it it all culminated in a um, experience that took place at work. We had a big open plan office, and um, I was just sitting there doing drawing up some plans, and I went into this really profound state of, of complete silence. Um, and it um, it just got deeper and deeper, and and I just started feeling my my whole human personality dissolving, like it was like a pulling the thread on a jumper. It was just, the jumper was just disassembling itself, and and I, less and less of me was there, uh, but I wasn't in the slightest bit worried. I loved it. Um, I just wanted to dissolve more and more and more until I, I, I just became this completely clear vessel, like made of glass with the Kundalini, um, the, the Holy, God, Holy Spirit flowing right through the center um, in complete silence. And then I just, some last bit surrendered and I felt something un, unwind in my head. And suddenly, uh, Sri Mataji just seemed to download herself into my being. And for a moment, I was Shimataji, just full of light and power, and I just knew so many things. And my, kundalini, my chakras and kundalini just went into action like uh, so powerfully. They were just doing such extraordinary things that I got frightened because I thought, what's going to happen to all these people around me, you know, in the office? And I kind of jumped out of it. Uh, of the state and, and was just sitting there at my desk completely stunned uh, that was the high point of my 
uh, that's the most miraculous thing I ever experienced. Really, it's like if you if you can completely surrender the ego um, and super ego, your human personality completely dissolve, then you become a perfect instrument for mother to work through. Um, yes. And and so that the ultimate goal of Sad Yoga is is staring you in the face at every moment. All you have to do is surrender to completely dissolve yourself in thoughtless awareness that's right I mean, that was uh, a lot of other things happened as well but that was you know i, I when remember and where that was this? sorry was it, when and where was this experience it was in west uh no oh, no where was it it was in um Barry st edmunds in is it in sussex uh, stuff i can't remember i was working there anyway in a in a building company in in a big open plan office yeah and is that just when was this the the that, 80s 90s no, no it was it was it was much like it was about um uh early 2000s i, I would say something like that wow. amazing wow Greshna, would you like to share uh, uh um an experiment how, how, can, they, how can they match this there's the, if there is no match it's actually amazing <laughs> how you <laughs> articulated your experience pat i'm quite stunned uh, well, so, I can, so well okay <laughs> uh, so uh, i don't know i have three experiences Go on. but um because i just wanted like when pat was talking about she met his feet yes and so so uh, they are very powerful as she she tells us but we don't we don't really like if if people didn't experience if they yeah. are new you know uh so uh, they don't know that uh, they don't know how powerful they are so uh, what happened um, in one of the pujas and um, I went, we used to go and put our head on Shimataji's feet and she would just work on our vibrations. So uh, okay. Sometimes you used to, it used to be um, after the puja, we would go to Shimataji's feet, you know, to pay respect and to, somehow she was clearing us out still. <laughs> but um, in one of the pujas, um, that was the puja when we, uh, we, we we used to make crowns for Shimataji sometimes, you know, for the pujas. And uh, this was the first crown that we made, uh, Indian style. Um, and Shimataji liked it. <laughs> and, um, and I was very happy that she actually liked it. So I went to Shimataji's feet. I, mean, I approached him at the feet. And they are immaculate. They are, they are made of alabaster. They are totally pure, like Immaculata is the name that we give Shimataji, completely yeah. pure. Her feet are like that. Her feet are in a different dimension. Wow. No human being can touch those feet. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't really. I, I just bow down in complete awe. Amazing. So she energy creates this illusion that they are, you know, they are just normal feet. So we go. So we yeah. without any hesitation, we just go on her feet, but they are not normal. But this is the Mahamaya form of Shramataji, exactly. isn't it? It's um, absolutely easy for amazing. us. Exactly. It's Mahamaya all the time, you know? Yeah. And sometimes Shimataji steps out from that. And um, and allows us, or maybe it, it just happens that she can't she can't carry on with this human form. She steps out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She yeah. steps out of this, and and then we can we can see who actually is before us because sometimes we forget. Yeah. And there was another another experience with Shimataji's feet. And when we uh, Shimataji did a little puja, we were looking after 
um, uh, Sahaja Yoga in, in Devon. And then Shimataji was going to um, have a uh, TV interview. And before the interview, um, she actually, uh, we just did a little puja. We wanted to ask if she could agree for a little puja. It was not to any specific deity. It was just washing her feet. And um, and we were washing the feet, uh, and I could I could sense the feet, the vibrations coming. I could see. I mean, the vibrations coming out of the from her toes, wow. <laughs> like a machine <laughs> gun. <laughs> and, um, and so it was amazing. It was like uh, for me, it was the strongest puja that I remember. <laughs> This was but, in the 1984, wasn't it? it was, that you in no, it was, radio. Interview, in, no, it was yeah. it was earlier than that, I think. Uh, 83, maybe 82, or something like that. Okay. And um, but then you see, uh, so there was the interview in Plymouth, which was very, very good. Uh, mm -hmm. the TV interview was very good because after the <laughs> after the puja, um the crew, uh, the crew at the television station, all get, got the realization, and um, uh, there was a slot that they had nothing to do. And then Shimataji gave them realization, and of course, the person interviewing Shimataji asked all the right questions, and it was really very nice. And then Shimataji came, and uh, she did all in one day. She she did the public program. Uh, in the evening, she came to Exeter, went back to Exeter and the public program in the evening. And the next day, uh, and then she went to Bristol. So it was in one day, she from Bristol, she came, she, she, she did the puja, then she went for the TV interview, then she came, uh, she came for the public program back to Exeter, and then she went back to Bristol. Uh, but the thing is, the the next day, after after Shimataji had been, uh, I was getting a coach, and I I still had the image of Mother's feet in my head. You know, like they were there. Yeah, there was nothing else. <laughs> they were just there. I I I got on the coach, and the next thing I know, I'm. I am in London. Wow. I, literally, I have no record. I didn't go to sleep. Mandy's feet in my head. Wow. Finished. There was five Amazing. hours, five hours journey. <laughs> and it was just yeah. no, no time existed at all. You know, it's beyond, she is beyond time. Yes. The color, <laughs> the, isn't it? Yes. Wow. Yes. Um, Shimataji married Patton yourself, Greshna. So um, maybe we I'll ask a couple of uh, questions on that. And um, so, you know, you were matched by Shimataji, you were married in Sahajoga by Shimataji herself. What was it like to be in her presence? You know, when you sort of like Pat had mentioned, they didn't, he didn't know anything about protocols and, um, the first India trip actually taught the protocols uh, for the Adi Shakti, and it's still quite nascent at that stage, or was it all embedded? And what was it like, Pat? If you we could, were still uh, learning, definitely. I'd say we only started to learn when we first went to India. We were still learning, but uh, you know, by then uh, that was 1980, so we'd had a couple of years. Hmm. Um, so we had a bit of an idea. There were two couples um, that we got married in Chelsham Road. Um, beforehand, Mother, um, I, I got a message from um, a yogi where I was working. He said, uh, Mother's uh, suggested that you should marry Greshna. Um, you know, would you accept? Mm. And I'd only met Greshna once. And, right. Uh, I I I didn't feel any desire to mar to marry her, you know. Uh, I, you know, I didn't feel, wow, this would be amazing, sort of a thing. Um, so I I 
I meditated on it and I felt um, I felt sense the presence of Mahakali in my left side and I felt my right heart go cool. So I said, um, yes, okay, I will. And then I got the message back from mother. She said, sorry, you, you didn't say yes spontaneously enough. So I have to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, uh, um, after a week, um, it was all right. I mean, basically, we were, the yogis were all with, with mother at David and Hester's place. And, uh, uh, and um, I had to leave at a certain point to um, go to work. I was working at weekends at that point. And um, so I didn't know, you know, whether I was going to get married to Gretchen or not. And uh, I rang up from work in, later on to somebody who'd been there and said, did mother say anything about um, Gretchen's marriage? And, and he said, yes, yes, she announced her marriage. And I said, well, who to? And uh, he said, uh, I, I, I didn't catch that bit. I, I don't know who she's married. <laughs> We went through this sort of Maya, but uh, and then we had a we had to have a long engagement because Krishna had a the way she'd escaped from Poland, you know, in the days of the Iron Curtain, was to get yeah. a friend to come and marry her from from uh, West Germany, and uh, so she could get a, get out of Poland to visit, and then she shot over to London, and started seeking. I mean, that's her story, but uh, she had to get divorced first yes. which was a bit of an adventure in itself and um so that uh that what lasted for quite a few months so unusually we got engaged and we didn't get married for several months okay. by which time we got to know each other quite well krishna would you like to tell your part of the story please oh yes my part my part of the story um well uh, I was, in real life, I was feeling quite insecure because I don't know if I was going to be uh, sent back to Poland. I mean, the English were very good because they said, uh, you know, we were very happy to give you, to extend your visas and everything, but you have to extend your passport. The Polish authorities wouldn't do that, of course. You know, they were very, <laughs> they were communist <laughs> authorities. Yes. So. yeah very yeah. difficult sometimes and uh, so because i had to uh, i had to marry of convenience because for seven years i was trying to come to england i wouldn't i wouldn't get my passport you see so i had to do that anyway so I, even before i came to sahar yoga i tried to sort of sort it all out but the person that i married i went to Kathmandu and disappeared so nobody could really find him <laughs> So, oh so anyway, so that's another another story. So she Mataji knew that I was feeling quite, uh, you know, insecure. Uh, she would just hug me and kiss me every time she saw me. Wow. <laughs> I, mean, I couldn't. So I thought it was normal. And when she stopped doing it, then I was very unhappy. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, but you know, she—it was just uh, like she knew everything. She was such a good on the on yeah. the human level, such a good mother. You know, she she knew everything that I needed, and she so she she just said, "Well, you need to get married anyway." Um. So, what do you think about Pat? And. Well, I thought he had good vibrations. Uh, so, you know, I used to go those days, I used to go on vibrations. Um, so I I said, I said, that's okay, yes. And then, but every time I saw him and I would say hello, uh, he wouldn't talk to me. Huh. Uh, so uh, oh, he just put his head down and looked somewhere else. So I was thinking this is not a good start. And uh, well, I was waiting to find out whether I was marrying you or not. <laughs> so, but anyway, I was quite, um, you know, so I was quite surrendered. And then 
she mother she in the end she mother she asked me um uh, asked me if it was still okay and this was in Hester's uh, in Hester's house and there was this walk-in closet for clothes uh -huh. <laughs> she mother she was in this walk-in closet wow <laughs> and <laughs> And she called me, so she, in in there she asked me, so is it still okay? Yeah, I said, yes, yes, she met her, she, it's still okay. So she met her, she announced the engagement and, uh -huh. and then um, the next day Pat came to see me with flowers. That was very nice. Oh, so he was, nice. Actually, he was actually talking to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, <it knew. laughs> we we got married in in Chelsham Road, um, and we'd already been uh, we we were working on the building that meditation room at the time, and so it had no roof. Uh -huh. and, uh, we uh, so in the evening we just had to put some plastic over it and hang a wow. few balloons. With them. Can I uh, share the photos of your wedding? We have some. Yeah, if you can find them. There. Uh, actually, we were married by a priest. Uh, okay, well, yeah. that's mother um, doing up my turban. Uh huh. That's the two of you, and that's the priest, I suppose. That's the priest. Yeah. Yes. The priest. That's the me looking, what to do? So. Uh, me looking terrified. Yeah. Is this how the wedding that happened now with the Havan Kund and the seven? Uh, yeah, yeah, same thing, fire. same thing. Yeah, with yeah. the same Okay, there you are. Yeah. So it's the first time you're going to feed him something from the looks of it, Krishna. Yes. Probably. <laughs> How did it feel wearing all those beautiful clothes? Looked lovely, both of you. It was, uh, it, well, you know, it, it was um, like everything. And this is Shimataji yeah. settling yeah. our settling our center hearts. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, well, to be blessed by and then, and then uh it yeah, you know, it was really good. And then afterwards, um afterwards we we had no we, in those days no none of the um yogis had any money hardly. Uh, right. Uh, or or work. And uh, so Douglas said we could go to his, uh, stay in his um, flat and he was somewhere else and um, afterwards. So, and uh, someone, someone lent me uh, his van to, to drive there after the, the wedding, yeah. which was in the evening. And, and it was an old battered builder's van and it ran out of petrol uh, near Baker wow. Street at 11 o'clock at night. And uh, that's where we had our, First argument. So I, I refused to get out of the car wearing my turban. And Gretchen said it wasn't auspicious to take it off. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. And then we flagged down a taxi and, and Gretchen had put her veil down. So all you could see was this sort of veiled um, Eastern looking lady. And, and the taxi stopped and Gretchen had jumped in and he drove off. I had to chase after them. Uh, eventually, stopped, <laughs> and, and we got a lift back to Douglas's. It was quite an interesting beginning. This sounds very um, Bollywood movie like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a bit. The whole, the whole thing was like this because because the thing is on the day of the day of the marriage when she met her, she, um, she met her, she came uh, to Chelsea Road. Uh, so I was thinking she met her, she was, she was coming. There is no roof. In the morning, there was no roof. It's a building site. What's going to happen? I was getting ready across the road. And then uh, somebody came uh, three hours later saying the roof has arrived. Then somebody came uh, uh, four hours later to say, uh, it's looking like an Arabian tent. Beautiful. Uh, all the walls are covered with carpets and saris and yeah. everything uh, so it was actually so it was actually it felt amazing and it felt yeah. so so nice and Shimataji came and there were some people who were not yogis actually I think some of them 
So she uh -huh. was wearing dark glasses. You can see her wearing dark glasses in the in the photo. I don't know. But so the priest was conducting the ceremony and she met her with blessing, you know, the ceremony. So it was a yeah. little different. Yeah. And uh, the, the, what mother said to us was um, never let the sun go down on a quarrel. Ah, that's so important. Yes, it was. I always tried to follow that, even though uh, I was usually right. I would always apologize uh, before me. the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> the um you know when Shamata G uh, matched you both and how she matched well me and Shankar also of course luckily and so many Sahaj Yogis but what was the um what was the thing that mattered most uh in in this relationship because this is not just a a marriage uh of two individuals on on the basis of their uh you know what they do where they are how they look it's something much more isn't it could you could you tell us please about it well absolutely i mean you, you the marriage is not is part of your spiritual journey your spiritual ascent uh it's very important it's just not isn't it's nothing to do with whether it suits you uh or, or it's not the way you might want it you have to make it work uh, that's I, I i would never dream of um uh trying to break a marriage that motherhood has arranged i mean it was sacred to us yeah. not to everybody i have to say but um you know there's, there's that strength it, then it's not just a matter of of, of mutual attach, uh, attraction or something like that it's it's just you have a partner in life who who you can depend on you know who you know is royal loyal i mean gretchen was just amazing in in no time at all she you know because i had my son kevin who was being looked after by my parents from my first marriage before sahaj and in no time at all gretchen was going to his school uh fighting for him to change this subject and that subject and you know wow. she took it all very seriously and and was brilliant always have been brilliant we yeah, had the odd interesting row, of course, but never past sunset. <laughs> well, I used to be a teacher, so I was quite quite concerned about education. Yeah. Greshna, what was it like for you, this marriage that Shramataji had arranged with Pad? You're in a different country, different culture. Uh, you've got a family. What was it like? And how did it evolve with time, your role as the Gruha Lakshmi? Mm -hmm. Well, to begin with, to begin with, it was uh, it was challenging. Uh, uh, <laughs> it was, it's not just that because uh, we we were struggling uh, to find somewhere to live, and um, and also um, and also uh, so we lived in some ashrams to begin with, and mm -hmm. and then we we were trying to arrange something for. Um, for Pat's son to come, so he could come and live with us. But luckily, we got we got an apartment uh, quite quickly. Uh, mm. It was really great, and um, I think it was quite normal. I think it was it was very very nice for me to have a family and to be settled and to meet Pat's uh, to meet Maureen and yeah. uh, and his family and his parents were very nice. Uh, his parents were well traveled. Um, they, they from, uh, they were. I mean, the family was born in Hong Kong, so it was not, not like uh, they didn't like the foreigners. So I was very much accepted by the family, which was great because it doesn't always happen no. like that. So I was very lucky, and of course, I I wanted even before. Um, and she said, I uh, she wanted me to get married. I, I just I the only thing I desired to uh, to marry a good Sahaji yogi. And mother said he's a very nice person. <laughs> he's a good <laughs> yogi. So I mean, you know, what else could I ask for? And I, I must say that I'm really glad that I got married to Pat. Wow. Well, she was she was brilliant. You know, we, we really had no money. Uh, we 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 did get a 
a flat from the council, but there were no carpets, no furniture. And and she'd come from Poland where she had her own flat and, and a boat and all kinds of things. Uh, and, and she was, uh, it didn't phase her, you know, she just got, got down to trying to make what she could with whatever we had. Fantastic. I think it Fantastic. was a good experience for me because um, I think it makes you humble to have very little to begin with. Um, so, I mean, for me, it was a good good thing. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's fantastic how um, you, you accept and you embrace uh, the circumstances because you know the journey is actually within, not without. Exactly. Well, that's fantastic. So from, from um, well, so many years of uh, being Sahaja Yogis, being married by Sri Mataji as Sahaja Yogis, is there any word of advice that you would have for uh, the people watching and for the future generations? I'd leave it to you to... Uh, I don't know, really. It's, it's, it's not a, you know, it, it's a matter of... Um working together and, and thinking of the other person. Uh, you know, we, we, we just, we, we have arguments, but they're, they're quite balanced arguments. <laughs> we don't really take them very seriously, <laughs> I guess, but we've always got on, we've always uh, managed uh, through very difficult times. Uh, and it's mainly been because the marriage is something more than just a marriage to us. You know, it's part of, it's be just as, you know, it's like saying, would you stop being a sad yogi? You would, you know, it'd be the same thing. Uh, I, I, I think if both parties are, are making an effort to make it work, that, that it, there's no reason why it shouldn't work. My, my other attitude was basically that most people can marry anybody. Uh, I think she used to choose people who would work out each other's problems or support each other's weaknesses. That was all. But it wasn't about, you know, this idea of finding this ideal partner that you go swooning around about for months on end at all. It was someone, just someone, yeah. a partner in life that you can depend on. Uh, yeah. Basically. Gresham, thanks, Pat. Uh, I suppose... It's uh, for me. It's it's a responsibility that we have towards mother and Sahaja Yoga to make to make the marriage work. I mean, uh, we are all realized souls. I don't see why it is so impossible. But she mother she found she mother she found it was a headache for her. All this. Uh, sometimes she would uh, match people and they were changing their minds saying maybe like this and maybe no maybe yes um so i mean she said to me there are 10 people in the room and i have to match them how can i find d1 uh, <laughs> <laughs> how can i find d1 it's it's uh, quite impossible so uh, and and i thought she 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 just she just thought anybody could marry anybody. The marriage yeah. is not so important. The spiritual you you are together like a, a two wheels in the chariot, and and this is to bring to bring forward the new generations. You know, uh, that's the most important thing, really. Uh, so. I don't know. It's just I think if we are yeah. all in the Sahasrara, we can we can be married to anybody. <laughs> so I yeah. think I think uh, yogis in the marriage, if they have problems, um, they need to meditate more. Both of them on that. Um, yes. You know, and try to try to uh, have a go and don't, don't give up straight away. I'm talking about the the, the young ones yeah. who yes. are actually who are now you have so much choice. <laughs> you you have uh, you have, you you. It's very easy for for the young ones to uh, to do Sahaja Yoga even as the vibrations are everywhere. Where yeah. when 
1980 when I came, there were hardly any vibrations. You go in the street and you, it's really heavy. Yeah. So all these pujas, all these heavens, all these realizations over many years, we may say we may not have that many people. Yes. We have vibrations everywhere, you know? People get their realization. You, you, can, you can look at somebody, they get their realization, you know? It's, yeah. It wasn't like that before. No, it wasn't. So I yeah. have this photo that I'm sharing now. It's from um, the very early days, isn't it? Yes, that's uh, 1976, I would say, yes. in Mother's Back Garden at her screen. Um, that's uh, me with the striped orange thing. Uh, yeah. Um, that's... Uh, Douglas. I mean, my sister Maureen is there. Yes. With the red sari. Lovely dress. Or yeah. Dress or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, uh, part of a. Uh, we'd obviously been doing some sort of a Havana or, or a puja or something. Yes. And uh, we, that, that was just the back lawn of, of Mother's house. That's amazing. Tell us about this photo, Pat, yeah. please. That was in, um, that was in 76. We were, we went, to, Mother took us to Western Supermare uh, for a, a seminar all six mm -hmm. of us and uh, mm -hmm. she had a, a relation i think it was her niece who had an indian restaurant there and uh, this was a box from above the restaurant and um mother had been um trying it because i was very serious in those days i was quite badly damaged and mm -hmm. um mother was trying to make me smile and that was the point where i just began to smile so so my Yes, you sister can took see a that. picture of it. Um, on, actually, uh, actually, on another uh, another occasion when I mother wanted me to smile, she um, and I was being serious. She she took two of her bangles off and and hung them on my ears. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's impossible not to smile when that happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um. I also have some photos uh, from Bodhi. I would like to share with you, and if you could talk to us about it, please. Is that okay? Yeah, well, this was just, must have been, yeah, Bodhi, that's where we went was in the days before Ganapatapuli. So that's your um, first Indian trip, India tour? Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't remember it specifically. Um, but uh, although we had all sorts of... I remember um, I got very ill while I was there. And uh, I, I went home. We, we were living in little huts. And uh, wow. I went left the programme. I went home and I went tried to sleep. And after a while, I heard this knocking on the door. And I got up in my sleeping bag and hopped to the door and opened it. And there was Shumataji. Come to wow. see how I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Ralba, I think. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it looks like Ralba. That's also bawdy. Wow. Yeah, sit on the beach. Gee. This was uh, one of the, I think it was probably the first Havan. This was on the uh, patio outside the, the, the back of Shumajaji's house. Wow. Um, and that's, um, I took the photo, I think. That's mm. uh, Satpal, the, the Indian chap on the left. Right. The Pujari, and then the other two are yogis, Douglas, who passed away not long ago. And uh, yeah, our mother was just taking a thing. This was a, a photo I took of Shimataji in her in the back garden. There was a whole series of them. One of them, she looked quite fierce, and she said that was quite good to chase boots away from the agya. But this was one where... Mother was just, this was in, uh, oh, disappeared back again. This is still her screen garden, isn't it? And then here yeah, is. Yeah, this one. This is in um, uh, Gregoire's garden in Kathmandu, um, oh. where we spent a week with Mother. 
I was quite caught up in this photo. I, I was, I, I kept getting uh, ill uh -huh. about, around about that time. Um, I mean, she's looking just so beautiful as usual, isn't yeah. she? Amazing. Yeah, we were, um, yeah, he had this house in Kathmandu and we all stayed there for a week. It was great. Wow. This was one of the seminars. Uh -huh. um, I'm I'm there in the middle without my glasses. Yes, um, I can see here probably. Yeah, yeah. And that's various people um, who were there. It was, it was a break during the seminar. I can't remember where it was. You can see how the number has increased. Old, from, yeah. Old oh, yeah. Alsford. Old Alsford. Old Alsford, Old Alsford, yeah, May yeah. 1980, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Something like that, yeah. I, I can see a few people who disappeared. Oh, this is another photo I took in Scotland. Uh, okay. I, it's, a bit, it's a bit naughty, really. I Mother came, brought CP up to, to have a holiday, but actually to help work out problems for us vibration-wise, because we were at an ex-transcendental ex meditation flying academy oh. that had been emptied and we were there's a whole long story about that and uh, very naughty of me I, I asked mother if she'd hold the fishing rod she wasn't really fishing I just thought okay. it would make an amazing picture um, and um, it was interesting because after she'd done that um, mm. she gave the rod back to us and um, uh, the whole of the there's a huge great Lake Lock, they call them in Scotland, on, on the right. Um, mm. And all across the entire surface of the lock, fish were jumping suddenly wow. everywhere, hundreds of them. Wow. Quite hundreds. Yeah, it's amazing. amazing. It's good to know the story behind this photo because this is, you know, it's a very sort of well known photo of Shamanshi, but to, mm. to know. I feel a bit story. ashamed, you know, asking Mother to sort of pose with it. This was um, Mother at Stonehenge, which was when uh, where Gushan and I met. We ah. um, we were at a seminar, or lots of us, and halfway through the seminar, Mother said, let's all um, go for a drive. So we got this long tail of cars, and every time we came to a roundabout, Mother made the driver drive round and round the roundabout to, and, so, and, and would decide to shoot off in some random direction, not random, but random to us. Uh, and then she kept doing that. We weren't going anywhere in particular. And each roundabout, we lost, you know, half a dozen cars that all went the wrong way. And in the <laughs> end, there was, uh, there was a four or five cars arrived and we arrived somehow at, at Stonehenge. And I was uh, in the back of the car with Gretchen. We just got in and someone gave us a lift. Uh -huh. And uh, I don't know who took this photo, Beautiful. but that was quite, quite a special day. Yeah, yeah. The sun's out yes. and the other is there. I mean, what more can we ask for? And you I can know. see we, Malaysia we, here in the profile. Looks yeah. like it. Yeah, we went to another place, Avery, that uh -huh. has a lot of standing stones with Mother before we did the Caxton Hall thing. And Mother walked around pointing out some stones were... Uh, different chakras, different deities, and wow. things like that. Uh, Did Mother say something about these uh, stones that have been put on top? Yeah, on she top didn't like them at all. She said they shouldn't have done that. She thought it had been done later on. Uh -huh. uh, this was me working at Pratistan. Um, right. So it's uh, plastering from the looks of it. Sorry? Plastering is it plastering? No, I, I I don't know what I was doing, measuring something. Uh huh. Um, uh, yeah, mother created those. Um, yes. That those Beautiful pillars, pillars just out of yeah. bricks uh, at different angles. You know, she experimented with them for a while, and then she got got them built them all that way. I was mostly work while well, I was there. I was working on on uh, ornamental plaster work, doing casting. Uh, for a lot of the other things. Beautiful. I think this is what you mean by the casting. Oh, yeah, that's some of it, yeah. Some of yeah. it was um, plaster and some was concrete. We were casting them in concrete. 
And I really? also did all, a, lot, a lot of the uh, uh, dumbbells around the, the, the little verandas around the bedrooms on the second floor and third floor. Oh, wow. This is, this is Mother's house in her screen. Uh -huh. um, uh, in Ox near Oxted. This was. Uh, this is the first house of Shrimataji in England. Is that yes, fair? Yes. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Um, we, we. Yeah. I mean, it was um, quite a posh sort of cul-de-sac with all these detached houses. We there was a kind of a sitting room upstairs up the top there on the left, uh -huh. where uh -huh. we spent a lot of time with mother and and. Uh, that was her bedroom below, and uh, over on the right side there was a sitting room, and yeah. behind there was a quite you know quite a big garden with a wow. patio. That is amazing. It would be because um, it would be very nice to see because you and Greshna and I think a couple of you more, Pat, uh, no Maureen. Was there probably and Gregoire and his wife and Andy and John and Francis when you filmed this, wasn't it? Yes, uh, yes. Many years later, we went back and walked around there. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that was an amazing uh, journey uh, of Sahaja Yoga with you, Pat and Greshna, and your time switch, Mataji. Really, really so special. Mm. Yeah, I don't know what I did to deserve that. Well, let's let's just say that we did those good punyas to deserve it, and that's how we are here. Thanks. I to remember. I, I remember when 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 uh, the first time Gregoire not uh, it was the second time Gregoire had come actually, but he um, uh, the, the whole room where Mother was um, was full of hippies. And they were all arguing with uh, Mother about drugs. And um, Gregoire appeared halfway through that, and he walked in in this kind of white safari suit with a bow tie, and hurriedly whipped the bow tie off and shoved it in his pocket when he saw <laughs> all the people <laughs> in the room. And anyway, they were all arguing and, about drugs and everything. And, and Mother, um, you know, the, the, a couple of times before, I'd seen her commanding such pa spiritual power I was just in awe. And yet when these people were just refusing to agree with her, she just wrapped her arms around herself and hugged herself. Like, a, And I just felt it was like a mother with her children who, who didn't know what to what to do because she couldn't force them, to, you know. Yeah. And um, so I just said, I said, OK, I'll stop. Uh, and um, there was this dead silence and everyone, all the hippies glared at me. And I got quite annoyed. I thought I should be free to do whatever I wanted. But anyway, yeah. It was, exactly. uh... Wow. That's, that's just a beautiful recollection and, and mother's patience, Shrimataji's patience and her absolutely immeasurable, immense love for her children that that she bore so much she tolerated so much and yet Absolutely, all she yeah. has done is just give us blessings after blessings isn't it yeah extraordinary and this was not only for few people that came in the beginning but she constantly w was doing it so yeah. many people have memories of her looking after them and uh, yeah. presence um uh, she would just give us presents, you know, and, and many people got presents later on and she would buy us clothes. Oh, you had to be careful not to admire something in her house. She'd just pick it up and give it to you. <laughs> really? <laughs> what are the most, uh, well, it's kind of like um material question, isn't it? But what are the presents that, I mean, you would have got so many from Trimata G, I would, I would imagine. All sorts what of are the things. ones that stand out? I think I've got one over here. Hang on a minute. That's that's Krishna's isn't it somewhere? It's on the it's on the window. No, it's not there. The the uh, the tiger thing. No, the tiger. Yeah. No, it's not there. Now this one, mother gave me. Yeah, uh, the the cockerel. 
Oh, wow. We keep it in the, um, like, up to the front. Beautiful, yes. Yeah, we, I keep it in the front window to keep an eye on all the passers by. Wow. And there's Lovely. another thing somewhere here. Can I show what happened to that tiger uh, in the cage? Yes, I, they are, they are, they, they, they have been put away, you know, sometimes I, they are some other ones uh, there. Probably, but anyway. No, thanks for sure. We, are quite, we have quite a few, but the... Yeah. Well, some, but, some we've, some I, I've given away because I, I felt it wasn't to other yogis because I felt it wasn't fair that I should have so many. But you're not supposed to. Then yeah, but I didn't to, know that then. No. So anyway, yeah. so I got, I got, there is a whole video of Shimadaji giving us presents um, mm -hmm. in Cheshire Road. There were many, many people, everybody got something and um, she commented on every present uh, she, and she knew exactly what it was and she was supervising wrapping the presents before that. So it's just so amazing, so much attention to detail and so much love. Um, being poured into everything she made it and I mean when we were going to India um, she, made, she would ask for our measurements for kurtas and petticoats and blouses and and they were all made uh, they were all made in India and we would just collect them Amazing, isn't it? The attention to detail of Shramataji. Very the much so. And then she was, uh, she would be concerned what we were going to eat uh, uh, there and um, what it was suitable, what was not suitable. Uh, I don't know, just everything really. Is there any, um, I mean, it's just so beautiful and those, those presents and those memories, no doubt, uh, spread the vibrations and love of Shramataji. Um, I just wanted to ask if there were any other treatments that you you wanted to share with with us. Treatments that you would have suggested. Uh, take more of a treatment love. person. I am not yeah. a treatment person. Well, I... you know, it's my my main treatment is a lemon. Yeah, it's not uh, the, the, uh, the lemon for the left side treatment. Le uh, the left side lemon treatment it was given to somebody else later on. But with the lemon, Shimataji will use lemon for every chakra, really. Yeah. You uh -huh. put just lemon, if the chakra uh, vibrated lemon, if the O line, if the chakra is, you can feel the chakra is uh, catching or you feel discomfort, you just put vibrated lemon on the cha particular chakra and you hold it for some time and you can feel it, the vibrations from the lemon coming in and the, whatever it's not wanted, uh, it's ex it's like an exchange, the vibrations going in and she said it, it, it sort of, the lemon acts as a extra chakra because the negativity thinks uh, the negativity just goes into that lemon you know because it oh. has to go somewhere so it has got to, so uh, the lemon um uh, it has to be disposed of uh, has to be uh, uh, normally i mean i just throw it away but uh, when i first came people used to cut them up uh, or they used to put um, candle, uh, candle smoke, uh, uh, candle flame around the lemon to keep the negativity in. All kinds of methods were there. I used to bury them. I mean, mm -hmm. you can just now I just dispose it so, and it can be used for for everything. Um, and so vibrated. Uh, sorry, vibrated oh. lemon in front of Shimataji's photo uh, for for one night or two nights, and then you can use it. You can use it as you like. Um, you use the same lemon for all the chakras on your left side and left right side, side. Yes, on your left side, this is a special treatment. But okay. if any chakra you can feel, um, even, especially it's a good for, for the Agya chakra. Agya, yeah. Uh, because you can you can hold the vibrated lemon and it, it, you can feel it's just going in, you know, yeah. the, uh, something is going in and the, the, uh, the Agya chakra is clearing. Um, and uh, 
Uh, what what else was that? Well, she not that she would vibrate the lemons and chilies for us herself. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, at the time, we, was, we would just bring them, and she would vibrate salt and and uh, salt sugar. I wonder if people do this actually these days, because you 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 can put the salt and sugar in front of her picture, and she and then the vibrations come from the picture overnight. Salt and sugar uh, are vibrated. Uh, also put the water in front of Shimataji's picture. Uh, the water gets vibrated. It's good to drink it. Uh, yeah. You have problems, you know, with your stomach. Uh, I wonder because I don't I don't see people doing this uh, very often, especially with salt and sugar, you know. Uh, yes. Which is very good because then you can add you can add uh, the salt and sugar to the salt, and it's it's. You have the vibration. Yeah, yes, yeah. exactly. So I mean, in India, they vibrate turmeric and kumkum as well. I suppose here as well for cooking. Yes, you, 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 you can do. you can vibrate. Yes, and also, I mean, what we used to do uh, for clearing um, places, we used to um, and clearing ourselves. We used to put left hand towards Shimataji's photo and right yeah. hand out of the window. That was a wow. Uh, method of uh, of clearing and it actually it, it works very well uh, so it's not to the ground but out of the window it, yeah. it, it cleanses the whole room really so uh, yes uh, I don't know what, what else um... yeah no thanks for those uh, treatments and especially for reminding the vibrated uh, sugar mm -hmm. and salt that everybody cons consumes but it just in the routine of things and the humdrum of life and you know the work life balance and this that and the other it probably takes a back seat yes but and also also easy. ghee ghee should be vibrated we use the ghee using the ghee is very important and the, the ghee could be vibrated in front of shimataji's photo and then use it you know like so like you that. use the ghee in food or do you also no, use no, it well or... you, can, you can use it but Otherwise, everybody will bring butter, uh, potatoes. <laughs> no, I mean, but this is this is <laughs> this is more. Oh, and I love your uh, potato, <laughs> roast potatoes. You reminded me <laughs> of. And, and you know, so I think, but with the ghee, because we use it for our personal use for the cleaning the hamsa chakra, so it is it is important for for the ghee. Uh, to just to remember to vibrate it in front of Shimata Jitsalta, uh, that would be a good thing to do. And um, I don't know what else. There are so many treatments. Uh, you see, one thing uh, the uh, the the new people or new 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 people who are uh, not long in Sahar Yoga, uh, they are very lucky actually because they have all the all the talks of Shimataji online, uh, yeah. they can they can uh, Google everything. They can find out all about the treatments. We didn't have that. Uh, yeah. Sometimes we didn't know uh, what Shimataji advised people to do because uh, there was a very limited supply of videos and um, tapes. We used to have these big cassettes. I mean, there was nothing online. VHS, so, yes. So and, I, and the uh, and the vibrations are so much easier, as you said. Yes. <clears throat> it used to feel, you know, if you weren't with Shimataji in the early days, you went outside, you felt like you had a mountain on your head. Yes. You know, it was it was really like enemy territory. Um, I tried to keep a journal for a while, and uh, all it had on it was things like um, got possessed on the bus. <laughs> 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 it went on for a while. Uh, it, it's so much easier now. Um, everything is so much easier. So yeah, much that's why, yeah, that's why Shramachi worked so hard in, in the first few years in England, isn't it? Because it was just laying the foundation for the New Jerusalem, really. Well, I can give you an example uh, about the uh, yeah. Newton Body Show. I think it was 1981, and me and Pat and somebody else, we went to Mountain Body Show, and we just went to look around. We didn't 
Uh, we didn't have a stall. Nobody would even dream about having a stall. Uh, we we just looked around. We came back and and then um, we were meeting Shimataji later on. So we we walked walking. Shimataji looked at us and she said, "Oh my goodness, where have you been?" And then next thing we know, we're standing with one hand out of the window, and uh, another hand is to Shri Mataji. Yeah, and, you know because and we just went to look. We didn't do anything, and now we have our stalls in mountain body shows. Everybody comes to us to clear. We don't, Absolutely, I mean, they enjoy you, the experience. You see the difference in vibe. We yeah. were we actually are very strong now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, collectively it's like collectively Sahaja Yoga and Sahaja Yogis become strong when they get the realization join Sahaja Yoga. The apartment yeah. is really strong collective, and the vibrations are everywhere. It's it's a very different uh, situation. Yes, thanks to Shamanta G. Gresh, I'm going to share this photo. Please tell us something about this one. Okay. Oh, yes. So you can see, <laughs> you you can see. Um, we were just uh, some people like Douglas has got his hands on his forehead, and then yeah. um, Magda. Uh, this is Dania's mom. Uh, she's yeah. next to Dania. She has her hands uh, left hand up, leaving the right. Yes. And, uh, and with me, I am. Uh, I am just uh, uh, kneeling at the front of Shimataji. She's holding my right. What right. happened to your hand there? Ah, what happened to my hand? So there, there was a puja. Yeah. yeah with Shimataji. And during the puja, uh, we used to we used to have um, uh, like a bands which we would put on Shimataji's uh, Shimataji's arm. Mm hmm and also on her wrist with made of flowers. They were oh, just yes. flowers. You probably yes. see sometimes in pujas from the end. Yes. That's what they yeah. were. So I am putting a bound um, around Shimataji's wrist. And Shimataji looks at me and she says, Oh, is this your chakra? Okay. So the next day, I cannot move my wrist. Uh, I can't move my wrist. I can't pick anything up. It's right. so weak. It's uh, hopeless. Uh, so I thought something is working out, but after after a couple of months, I go to the doctor. They do they do tests, X-rays, nothing. Um, so after one year, this is this is another wrist. This was the left wrist to begin with. Mm -hmm. uh, so after one year. My left wrist is okay, and then there is my right wrist, which is even worse because then I can't really do anything. And here I've got I got a bandage around my wrist because yeah. to immobilize my hand because. Um, so you see, that's how the Vishuddhi that Shimataji mentioned <laughs> when I first came to Sahaja Yoga. How. This is working out, you see. So she's yeah. she managed is curing my my uh, right wrist. So this was quite a funny story because it went on for about two years. Really? And, yes. Well, first was a left hand, left wrist for one year, and this is um, maybe after she was working on it, it was quicker. This this yeah. one, the right hand. So sometimes when we have physical problems, it is the it the other chakras mm. uh, out, but but also it's good to check. I always check out with with the medical profession uh, as well uh, to be on the safe side because you have to be sensible. So was it? Did they say it was carpal tunnel syndrome or something? No, 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 nothing, nothing. It was not carpal tunnel. It was just. Just the chakra, Vishuddhi. And they couldn't diagnose it? No, they couldn't diagnose anything. And it yeah. went away by itself. And here. Wow. It's... And it's amazing how it was from left hand then to the right hand, isn't right. it? Yes, both. 
Amazing. Wow. Thanks for sharing that. You're welcome. Brilliant. Um, I think, is there anything that you would like to share with regards to any career advice or jobs, what sort of things we should do or um, directly that you have from Shamataji for men and women or anything like that? I don't know. No. I wouldn't Sorry. recommend plumbing. No. <laughs> <laughs> I had a bad time doing plumbing. Okay. But she better she like people to wear good have hands. But for careers, I think she at one point she said uh, she said to get careers in computers. Not that that she uh, liked the computers very much, but this was on the practical level. Um, that this would be the future, you know, in in uh, in employment because we need to be employed. Um, yeah. uh, she would she would make a point that everybody should work not to be unemployed basically yeah. it's not good well, she said it. she said times were going to be tough and to make yeah. sure that everyone was qualified in something practical qualified uh, and employed yes yes mm. yeah wow, I, I, I i tried to get out of uh doing i i, I was doing plumbing on a lot of golden builder work but i was always trying to get out of it and i managed to get a uh, get onto a degree course um, for environmental science and mother heard about it and told goes I know tell Pat that the, the vibrations will look after the environment and he needs to come to Cabela and do plumbing <laughs> so. it's interesting because yes yes Shimataji told me uh, Shimataji said there is no point of him studying this it will be much more useful for him to do plumbing in Cabela. And um, <laughs> I had to I had to tell him. Uh, yeah. It wasn't easy, but uh, at the time he was in, in uh, South Africa doing programs. So when he came back, I had to tell him that he has to come to Cabela. And she said the vibrations, the vibrations will sort out the 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 ozone layer. It will be all okay. I think. Really? Yes. Yes. Thing. So all this climate change, everything will be fine. I mean. Yeah, that's what she's saying. Vibration. The vibration. But then you know, I guess I needed to be in Cabela, laying well. fifteen ton sewer pipes all the way down to the village down the hill, and all the other sort of amazing well, things. That's probably another session on Golden Builders. <laughs> probably. Golden so many properties. Yeah, that yes. might be good. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's been fantastic talking to you both, Pat and Greshdan. Thank you so much for your time. Um, it's just just amazing to remember Shrimatji spending those time and to 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 imagine you know when those times when she would be with you guys for so long days on end isn't it i mean she's there with us all the time whenever we remember her but it's something extraordinary to 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 hear from you those those times in her physical well, form i think it's it's i think it's great that you're you're giving so much time yourself to do all this I mean, I'm not personally keen on interviews, but uh, I think it's good to get get some of this stuff recorded for the future. Yes, essentially, because always it has happened that, you know, after the incarnations, and it takes probably centuries, maybe thousands of years, and then you think, oh, there's a mythology. But it's actually <laughs> not, does not it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. So thank you very much um, for for being with us and okay. uh, lots of love on behalf of Shankarji, who is at work. So <laughs> okay. thank you so much from all well, of thank us. Thank you. And, thank you uh, for all you're doing. Thank you, Shramatsuji, first and foremost. Jay Shramatsuji, yeah. lots and lots of love. Bye, Shumatji. Bye, Shumatji. Right. Bye, bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. bye.